April is Autism Awareness Month. Health officials say nearly one of every 150 children is diagnosed with some form of autism. Reporter Kate Schoen gives us a glimpse into the life of an autistic adult. Kate? Thanks, Alex. The developmental brain disorder makes it difficult to interact with other people. Most people are diagnosed with autism when they're just a few years old. However, I recently met a man who didn't learn he was autistic until he was in his 40s. What I go by is Dave Spicer. Um, I'm 59. I was diagnosed with... Uh, it was a dual diagnosis of Asperger's syndrome and high-functioning autism um, in 1994 when I was 46. I'm Kim Engel, and I'm Dave's wife. I'm 45 years old. To say Dave Spicer is articulate is an understatement. This Asheville, North Carolina resident speaks in paragraphs, not sound bites, and his vocabulary makes you wish you had a pocket dictionary. But listen. Because my behavior doesn't match the assumptions and expectations that other people have just generally of, of uh, what socializing is like and what a child or an adult's behavior should be, um, I really get a sense of not fitting in and of being, you know, other than. It's a feeling Spicer says he can remember having since he was young, when no doctor had diagnosed him with autism, but he just knew he was different. I came to that realization indirectly by becoming aware of how sometimes puzzled and sometimes amused, sometimes upset um, people around me were. Spicer tried to blend in by imitating other people's behavior. The unseen effort to mimic the style of social interaction that most neurologically typical people seem to have. That amount of effort can be huge. An effort so huge that Spicer hasn't worked full time in years and communication with others is still a challenge. He's extremely literal and um, and I don't tend to be literal. I have to actually remember to talk literally sometimes and that, I think that's where the biggest problems in the communication come up. Spicer says getting a diagnosis was a blessing. Now he understands differences in his brain make him different. Autism can be appreciated. Life with autism can be made better. Life outside of autism can be enriched. Spicer says his effort to function in the non-autistic world is like being a duck, calm on the surface but paddling like mad underneath. Alex. Kate Schoen, live in the studio. Thanks, Kate. It's a safe bet most of us have never seen the human body like this before. And be aware, some of these images are graphic. An exhibit at the streets of South Point show the intricate workings of our bodies in a way that textbooks never could. The displays contain real bodies, organs, blood vessels, and nerves that have been through a special preservation process. The exhibit also shows what regular organs look like in comparison to unhealthy ones. It makes some stomachs a little queasy, like mine, but other people appreciate the educational value. It's neat to like actually see them positioned in the body rather than like in a textbook where you're just like looking. It's like here's a drawing of the bladder. It's more interesting to actually see where it is, and you can kind of see where it connects and works with the rest of the body. One section of the exhibit shows actual fetuses in various stages of development, some with birth defects. It seems everyone has an iPod, and that means a lot of people could have hearing damage. Researchers say people need to turn down the volume. Loud sounds bumping out of small devices, such as these earplugs that go directly into the ear canal, can cause permanent damage. Some people are taking these warnings to heart. UNC senior Esther Shin says she keeps the volume low when she listens to music. I mean, most of the time I listen to my music a little bit softer just because um, when I do listen to my music, it's usually when I'm doing my work and I get easily distracted. I don't know, it just makes more sense to me to not have it blaring. You can protect your ears by using headphones that cancel background noise. Listening to no more than an hour of music a day, staying away from loudspeakers at events, and using hi-fi earplugs. From human rights in Latin America to the South Asian environment, Coca-Cola has been getting some criticism overseas. Reporter Laura Rencon has the story. 
UNC grad student Gina Drew has been working with communities in India since 2004. Communities not at all happy with the soft drink giant. There are a number of communities that um, have experienced dra drastic reductions in the amount of water that's available to them, and they're attributing that directly to the presence of Coca-Cola factories. The first big protest was in Plachamata, Kerala. The company set up right next to the community and completely drained the water supply and in the meantime was distributing the, the byproducts, what they call the sludge, to farmers saying that it would help um, fertilize their soil. Coca-Cola Director of Public Affairs Pablo Larjaca denies the claims. There have been allegations regarding water depletion, regarding contamination of uh, water sources, and again, those allegations are not true. He says coca is responsible for only one hundredth of a percent of the water usage in India. In 2001, Colombia accused the company of aiding in the murder of eight union leaders. The case was dismissed, but the controversy about killer coke continues. Larjaka is a native of Colombia, and he attributes these deaths to the country, not the corporation. Our country has experienced a lot of internal conflict for, for several decades that has affected people from all walks in life. And I mean teachers, journalists, judges, trained unionists. While many schools are campaigning against and even dropping contracts with Coke, UNC does not currently have an active campaign. In Chapel Hill, I'm Laura Rincon, Carolina Week. Independent groups are investigating the situations in both countries and results are expected this year. Earth Day is almost here. The annual celebration of our planet is Sunday and people in Chapel Hill will be starting the tribute a little early. On Wednesday, Environmental Defense President Fred Krupp will speak in Carroll Hall at 7 p.m. And on Friday, there will be an Earth Day Fair in the pit. And we're joined now by weathercaster Jonathan O. Hi, Hi. Johnny O. How's it going? Oh, great. So it's feeling a lot warmer outside. Kind of makes me want to get off this desk and get out there. Exactly. I know some students like me and all of us probably are coming up with any excuse to get outside. And a false alarm brought these students out of the class and into the afternoon sunshine. Will the clear skies continue? Well, I'll have the answer after the break. <laughs> 